Hello there. Welcome back to another video. So uh, recently Bethesda came out and said that uh, we were going to be getting new ways to travel. And in the video where I kind of covered the various things Bethesda talked about, I gave some brief kind of ideas on what I believe those modes of travel would be. So I decided, you know, I've been talking about it on, on some of my streams, which if you uh, haven't seen any of my streams, I stream Friday um, at around 7.30 uh, GMT, so like Irish time. Um, that's like usually around like 12 to like 2, depending where you are in America, and then in Australia and places like that, it's like quite late. It's like this. Anyway, so yeah, so I've been been discussing it with uh, some of the some of my uh, subscribers. We've been kind of chatting about it. And I, I thought I'd just do like a video, kind of, because there's probably people who play this game that don't um, have as much, uh, not not knowledge necessarily, but they don't kind of, let's say, play as much of previous Bethesda titles, so they might not know which way Bethesda go with certain things. So yeah, so we're going to cover that today. As you can see, uh, we have we have moved, we are in the new house, uh, got the office up, nice, you know, nice and fancy. Anyway... So let's get into it. So we know that uh, Bethesda have said in their most recent update uh, on their website that they're going to be adding new ways to travel. Now, this is something that has been wanted for pretty much a while. Like since the game launched, there's all, there's been a bit of an issue when it comes to ground-based travel, specifically travel on planets that aren't settled. So like exploration planets. Uh, currently in the game, you have to kind of walk from point A to point B. And it can be quite tedious. Your only real mode of transportation is the jump pack or the boost pack. But that can be very hit or miss depending on the planet. Certain planets like planets that have very low gravity. The boost pack becomes more of a hindrance than like a, a helpfulness. And you end up taking a lot longer to travel. And then when you do kind of travel. When you kind of like say when you go from your ship to where you need to go. You kind of don't want to have to do the hassle of going, walking the whole way back, so you tend to just fast travel. So obviously, people have been kind of complaining about this idea, and I think Bethesda kind of realized as well, because they talk about this, the idea with their planets and stuff, and how they're, they're like kind of like procedurally generated and all this stuff, but players will inherently skip parts of planets because they don't want to have to walk around. So some of the methods that I think now. A lot of this, this is all speculation, but some of it is based on previous knowledge. I've played uh, previous uh, Elder Scrolls games and previous Fallout games. I'm familiar with the engine uh, Bethesda operates on. It's a similar engine to Skyrim and Fallout and stuff like that. And I'm also familiar with the kind of the, the certain mechanics Bethesda tend to lean into versus ones they tend to stay away from. So that's when some of the ones we're going to be discussing, we're going to be kind of talking about those sort of uh, mechanics. That, And the first one, which is kind of the, the, the more plausible option or the most plausible option, is to have a system similar to the horse mechanic from Skyrim and Oblivion. So if you played Skyrim and Oblivion, horses are quite simple in nature. They're, they're the quadrupedal creatures that they're basically just like... They function similar to the player. They they are slightly higher up, so they sit slightly higher up, and they move at a faster pace. And combat on them was not really a thing you could do up until one of Skyrim's updates. But in terms of like implementing it, it's quite a simple system. There's not like a lot of uh, there's not a lot of um, what would you say? There's not a lot of um, trickiness to it. The horses don't operate, they're not as intelligent as they would be in, in say, Red Dead Redemption, or Red Dead Redemption 2. They're very much like, you can have, if you played Skyrim, you know, you can accidentally walk them off a cliff. Now, how they would implement this into, um, into this game, into Starfield, it, there's a couple of options I was, like, thinking. So, one of the options is they could go the route of adding a robotic or kind of mechanized equivalent of a horse. So, I'm going to put up some some pictures of some, like, various different kind of, um, there's a couple. There's one in particular that you kind of see uh, around the docks and some of the more construction-heavy areas of planets. And it's basically this kind of mechanized loader. And it has like four little limbs that are either tracked or sometimes it just kind of there's various where it's not tracked. 
And while it's this vehicle itself or this object, it's just a static object that's used to kind of like enhance the environment and kind of set the scene. It's something that I could see Bethesda kind of like using and uh, modifying to be a kind of a like a custom like a, a vehicle. Uh, considering that in the game there's so we we currently have like a load of different cargo bays and stuff and it wouldn't be too difficult for Bethesda to add an extra habitat or like a, a module that would allow you to dock said um said uh like kind of like the the we'll call it like a loader almost and like it wouldn't be too hard because it would it would function pretty much similar to a horse in in its movement and its mobility you know it kind of would be the same height same kind of stuff like that it'd be very simple to do and they could also add levels of customization so one of the things that um that um kind of was a was a nice little feature that um Skyrim had although some of them it was I don't know if it was the creation club but I know that you could you could modify your horses by like you could obviously there was like different armors and stuff now some of that was down to mods but there was I believe the creation club added some so you could do a similar thing with these sort of like mechanized little kind of we'll call them mech horses almost is you could give the player the ability to modify them to their own likeness they could add potentially add weaponry on it uh, when it comes to weaponry uh, we have the turrets in game already that act as you know like weaponry and it, it wouldn't be too hard to kind of model them almost uh, if you kind of was to use something similar to how the the dogs actually function in game there's like mechanized dogs which i'll try and stick up a picture of just so you can kind of see them um but you could definitely have like different types of weapons on it. Uh, it they'd, I would assume if they were going that route, the weapons would be easiest to uh, implement them um, as a kind of an automated weapon, similar to the turreted weapons on ships. Now you could also other customizations. You could, I would assume, given that you know with how the ship builder is, you could kind of uh, add extra storage capacity, maybe increase the speed by lightening your your load, little color schemes. That's, so that's that's obviously one way they could implement the horse uh, mechanics. Now, another way they could implement the horse mechanics would be a kind of a, a trickier one to do would be to make use of the various mounts or alien creatures in the game as mounts. Now, this is something No Man's Sky has done, if you've played No Man's Sky. And it's I will admit it is a very cool feature, but it's something that would be quite tricky to do because they could either go about adding alien mounts one of two ways they could have certain they could add a vendor or multiple vendors on planets different planets that sell very specific uh mounts like so like 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 let's say for instance there could you could go to aquila and they could have like um like you know like some sort of like a horse based mount like i know they at the ashta are pretty big and bulky but you could potentially you could like modify them you know so they could go that route of like instead of having to worry about the the other alternative, which we'll get to in a minute. Instead, but instead of having to worry about like uh, setting like um, designing um, nav meshing and um, physics and like just everything, when it comes to all of the different alien mounts, you could keep it simple. They could have like four or five different ones, different types. You could have like a cool kind of like frontier style, like maybe like a kind of a horse-like creature, maybe like a six-legged horse-like creature, something similar to like the Avatar. You could have like a spider-like creature. You know, you could definitely play into the kind of the 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 star field, the different alien creatures, while also you know being quite simple in nature because they would be only be focusing on a smaller amount. Now you could obviously go the other route, which is how No Man's Sky tends to do it. Instead of having vendors selling like a small specific uh, like set of creatures that you can ride you could just basically tame and ride all of the various creatures in game i'm going to put up some screenshots of some of the creatures now this method would be a lot harder to implement because i'm not aware of how many creatures bethesda have in the game i don't know if they're procedurally generated like with um with no man's sky i don't think they are because there's i feel like there's a lot of overlap with some of the creatures but they would have to be more aware of like certain creatures like obviously you wouldn't be able to like ride flying creatures or like some of the creatures like for instance there's like little insectoid creatures that don't look like they'd be able to support a player's weight but there's definitely quite a lot of creatures out there that you could ride potentially and yeah it like it it 
out of the other method, like I was saying, of having like kind of a predetermined vendor that sells pre like pre broken in horses or like not horses, but you know what I mean. The method of just being able to kind of go out and explore and find your own tames or mounts would be quite interesting. Now, it's something we've seen Bethesda do in, like, other games. Like, in, in Fallout, for instance, there's, like, uh, a DLC they added where you could claim creatures. And you could basically, like, make them uh, your companions and stuff. Like, there was the... It was one of the settlement DLCs where you could make cages and stuff. And then obviously like with the going back briefly to the other one i was saying about like kind of mechanical mounts like we had the automatron dlc which allowed you to modify and make robots so like they clearly have the mechanics there of being able to make mechanized mounts now another uh mechanic slash method of travel that i think they could tap into now this one it'd be kind of more um I feel like it'd be equally easy to implement, but it would probably be easier in some regard. So if you played uh, Fallout 4 uh, or you played Skyrim, towards the end of those games in the Skyrim DLC, uh, Soulstime Dragonborn, or depending on the faction you choose to kind of complete the quest within Fallout, uh, you gain the option to have a vertebrate and or like a dragon. And they operate basically the same. They're kind of like a drone type thing where you hop in and they fly for you and you kind of just in the in the vertebrate situation you're controlling the machine gun and you can bring up your map and you can be like okay I want to go here and it will take off and fly you there and no loading screens and you can like shoot your gun while you're doing it. Uh, Skyrim's version with the dragon is a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit more to it because there's more like commands with the dragon. Like obviously with the dragon, you can choose to it, like target and attack specific creatures. And you can also set the dragon to kind of land whenever and take off whenever. The vertebrate is a little, little bit more finicky. It's meant to be kind of like more of a transport, less of a kind of a gunship. But both of those like use the same method of basically having like a kind of a, like almost like a, like a on rail system. And it, it gives players the the kind of the, the freedom to travel without kind of while still being kind of limited so they could go this route by basically having like some sort of like smaller like kind of like shuttles or like transport vessels like quite small um like let's say either they allow us to make uh, like said shuttles or like said transports which would be quite interesting i've said this before if they did go that route like say like making like little scout craft and stuff they would have to either be uh pre-built like so each manufacturer would sell them so hope tech would sell a variant stroud Eklund would sell a variant tayo would sell a variant nova galactic might have had a variant in the past uh demos have a variant and that would be kind of a simple option you wouldn't be able to build it or customize it too heavily maybe you'd be able to customize a little bit like the color scheme and like potentially the weapons but like quite limited and then it could attach to your ship and be kind of used as like a little kind of a like a drop ship type thing or a shuttle kind of think if you ever played mass effect think of it like kind of like being like like the um the hammerhead or the the mako uh, or the not the mako the um oh what is it called it's like they call it the the, the marines in mass Effect call it the cockroach it's like a kind of a transport shuttle but basically you use it as your main transport when you're not when you can't land the normandy so like that would be a method they could definitely go with now they could also which would be kind of um it would be more plausible and we know that it's already in the game but they could use this method of being able to kind of like have some sort of a an automated like a uh, travel system and it could make use of your ship so in certain missions or if you just randomly get unlucky and you try to board a ship ships can and will take off and break into orbit with you on them without you flying if you like try and steal a ship so it's it's something they could definitely do like when you land the ship on the planet they could be an option where you can hop in like the pilot seat or even to make use of the navigator console that is seen everywhere uh, on a lot of the modules and habitats is you could literally click on your ship let's say you're not in the pilot seat you click on your little hollow map and then you're like okay we landed here on alpha centauri on this random outpost on the south uh let's say the south pole I want to head up to the North Pole to another biome. You could just enter exactly where you want to go, click there. You 
kicks you out of the menu, ship takes off, travels to that point, you can walk around your ship while it's happening, but you obviously can't control your vessel, you're just kind of in it for the ride, which would be, again, it'd be quite similar to how the uh, Vertibird worked. And I think this would be kind of, like, this would be quite cool, like, from a, from a, um, from a roleplay point of view, like, from a, not a roleplay, from a, what is the word, um, I can't think of the word, immersion, from an immersion point of view. Because you could kind of walk around and see your ship in action. You like you could make more use of the windows. Because windows are something that are very cool in the game. But aside from when you're just parked in space looking out. Which even when you're doing that it's kind of pretty limited. The ability to just basically let your, your uh, craft go from point A to point B. While you walk around and do menial things on your ship. would be very very cool. Now another, another method that uh, I was thinking about. And a lot of these, like I was saying, a lot of these we were kind of, we were, when I was when doing a couple of my streams, we were spitballing at me and a couple of the lads in chat and the lassies in chat. We were just kind of talking about it. Because I know some of these obviously were things I had in my head and other things it was people had brought up in the chat. So once again, a little bit of plug in the chat. But if uh, I stream every Friday, if you're interested in kind of coming in and having some fun, we chat about Starfield and life and just stuff in general. Just, just it's a fun vibe. But anyway, uh, the ability to have, like, a shuttle system, because, like, we know, for instance, when it comes to, like, certain planets, for instance, um, like, let's say, for instance, if we look at uh, New Atlantis, right, you can make use of the train to get from point A to point B in New Atlantis, but, like, let's say you want to go to a different planet, like, let's say it's like, okay, I'm in New Atlantis, I want to go to Gargaran Point, or uh, not Gargaran, the planet, right? Gargan landing. It's like I'd have to jump in my ship and go there. And like, what if I want a more immersive option? Like, not everyone in game, like the NPCs, are going to have ships. Now we know transports exist because of the lore behind it, but like we don't actually get to see the transports. So having like a kind of a shuttle system in place, or ignore that, my dog is kind of spazzing out on the on the bed. Uh, or as a space Uber, as one of the one of the guys in chat was saying, would be quite a cool introduction to the game, and it would add a level of roleplay. Like, it, it would be quite simple. It would literally, you just have, like, a kind of a predetermined ship that lands on the landing pad. You could go to, like, a ticket boot, get a ticket, and there could be different versions. There could be in-system ones. So, like, let's say there could be one in New Atlantis that will bring you to Gargarin. There could be one on Mars that might bring you to Titan. There could be one in Aquila that might bring you to Montero, one of the moons. Or there could be, like, ones that will bring you between system. Like, one that could link you. You could take a kind of, a, like, imagine, like, a three-day, like, journey from New Atlantis to Neon. And again, it could make use of the mechanics of, like, let's say, for instance, like, you know, you, you board the ship. You get to your, like, assigned quarters, depending on if it's, if it's a longer journey. The ships might have, like, like cabins or something. Like, you could make use of that. Or if it was shorter journeys, there might just be, like, seating. And then it would take off, and you could see it take off. And they, the way they could kind of implement this... This would be, be kind of tricky, but it wouldn't be too hard. To allow, like... Like, give us the ability to kind of tweak this. So like, some people might enjoy... Uh, watching the ship take off and making the grav jump and like all of this some people might not some people might just like it from getting you to point a to point b loading screen now some people might not like it some people might be cool that you could basically like you could have in the settings option you could choose like you know like how immersive the travel would be like you could have full immersion where like the ship will take off there's minimal loading screens. It will basically take off, hit orbit. Once it gets clear of the planet, grab jump, get scanned, land on the planet. There could be like semi-immersive where it takes off. And then once it takes off, loading screen. And then there's just a landing. And then like zero immersiveness where it literally you just sit in your seat. And it just instant loading screen. You're back in your seat, but you're on the other planet. Now a system like this would be quite cool. And it be, wouldn't be too tricky to do. Because we already have the kind of, if you look at any of the major sit ports in the city, like even Paradiso, there's multiple landing pads. And a lot of the time those landing pads aren't in use. Like it'd be very cool if there was just like a shuttle just sat there. Now this would also open up the, uh, the, the ability to, because we in the game we have the ability to transport people from point to point. But the fact that if you look at it from a lore point of view, the fact that a lot of these people are relying on kind of like, freelance like like basically you're relying on a random person to pilot you from point a to point b 
adding a kind of a shuttle system or a transport system dedicated would open up another avenue of making money. Instead of picking up these like missions on the bounty board, you could have an actual uh, like a dedicated structure or like a, a company. Like imagine you could have like a kind of a, we have Triton and Triton are known for the stuff, but like imagine you could have a long range luxury transport company you could sign up with. You could ferry people from point A to point B. They might like to think elite dangerous with the transport where they might like to go places. Some of them might be like, oh, I want to go see the, the orbit of Nera, you know, see what happened in the Colony Wars. Some people might be like, oh, I want to go like see a star. And then you could have more kind of like clandestine travel where it's just point A to point B. It's like, okay, you're going to take these people from, from New Atlantis and deliver them to uh, Cydonia. And again, not only would it be adding new ways to travel, it would also be adding more kind of lore to the game more ways to earn money, which would be very, very cool. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it in terms of like ideas of how I believe Bethesda could incorporate the travel system. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I'll be doing more of these kind of like as we kind of get more information about what could be coming in the game, what's coming. I'll be like kind of picking it apart and giving my opinion on like what I think could be coming. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of the various methods and which ones would you guys think is the most plausible. And then, like like I said uh, in the previous video, which what would you like to see? If you could kind of see any sort of mode of transport at all, even something that you think Bethesda wouldn't be able to do, what would you like to see? Yeah, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of content and uh, check out some of my other videos. Oh, bye bye.